It's my pleasure to share with you some important results that were presented at the ESMO 2020 this year. These results concerned uh, the place of atezolizumab in triple negative breast cancer. Uh, we will focus on three trials. The first one in patient 031, which is dedicated to neoadjuvant approach in non-metastatic situation. And the two others, the inpatient 130, updated results for the overall survival, and inpatient 131, the first result from this trial, uh, in which I am one of the co-authors. The first trial I want to focus on is the inpatient 031. This trial is clearly dedicated to neoadjuvant approach and the place of uh, atezolizumab in combination with chemotherapy versus chemotherapy alone in triple negative breast cancer, non-metastatic, eligible again for neoadjuvant approach. The interesting thing is that the design is very pure. It's a phase three trial, about 300 patients, half in the atezo arm, half in the placebo arm with chemotherapy, the first part of the chemotherapy is weekly napaclitaxel, and the second one is uh, the doxorubicin cyclophosphamide approach. The total treatment was close to six months before, before surgery, and the primary endpoint was PCR. Clearly, the uh, trial reach is primary endpoint with uh, an improvement of the pathological complete response, a total PCR close to 60% for the atezo arm versus 40% for the placebo one. That means an increasing of 60.5%. Uh, In the subgroup analysis, according to the PDL1 status, even if it's not statistically significant because of statistical consideration, however, it's clinically meaningful because the improvement of the PCR is about 20% improvement in the atezo arm with a PDL1 positivity, close to 70% of uh, PCR versus 50% of PCR for the placebo arm. Interestingly, also, like it was in the Kino trial that was presented last year at the ESMO, we have also in the PDL1 negative an improvement, 50% for the atezo arm versus 35% in the placebo arm. This is a second trial showing clearly the potential important place of the immune checkpoint uh, therapies in the triple negative uh, cancer in combination with chemotherapy in the neoadjuvant setting. The next two trials uh, concerning atezolizumab in breast cancer I want to focus on are the inpatient 131, the first result presented this year, and the final result of the inpatient 130. You know that the two trials are very similar regarding the design. They are randomized phase three trial with a two per one randomization in triple negative breast cancer, first line. 131 is a trial when you will compare weekly paclitaxel with or without atezolizumab. The randomization is two per one in favor of atezolizumab arm. The primary endpoint was PFS, and among the secondary one, overall survival was also an endpoint. Unfortunately, the primary endpoint was not reached, and there is no difference between the atezolizumab arm versus the control arm. This is an important information, and regarding the overall survival data, they are pretty mature with a lot of events, and actually also we do not see any particular difference between the two harms. When you look at the subgroup analysis in the PDL1 positive or negative, also we could not find any particular results in favor of one or another subgroup. The particular point of the inpatient 131, even if the trial is negative, is that it seems that there is a small subgroup of patients that might benefit with a very long disease control. However, we could not identify this subgroup actually regarding the biological parameters that we know from the different uh, patients that have been treated in this trial. The other trial I, I mentioned before is uh, inpatient 130. You remember this, this trial was exactly the same design, but the chemotherapy drug was a little bit different. It was not paclitaxel weekly, but not paclitaxel. And we know from last year at the ESMO meeting 
that it was positive for PFS of in favor of atezolizumab, particularly in the PDL1 positive subgroup, and also that there is a strong signal of overall survival improvement in the same PDL1 positive group. The updated results are going exactly on the same direction regarding the overall survival benefit. Close to 25, 26 months of median overall survival in the Atezo arm and about uh, 18 months, I think, in the control arm. The difference is very meaningful from a clinical point of view. And the point is also that in the Atezo arm, in the PDL1 positive subgroup, there is still about one third of the patients that are alive after three years of uh, follow-up. That means that this strategy might be interesting, particularly in the pdl one positive population, and particularly if we can identify the population that will longer benefit from this strategy. The point is that uh, the difference regarding the results between well, inpatient 131 and inpatient 130 need to be explained, or we need to put some hypothesis. It doesn't seem that there is a huge difference between the population between 131 and 130. And maybe the main driver that we try to uh, use as an explanation regarding the differences is probably the chemotherapy regimen and the fact that with the weekly paclitaxel approach in 131, you need to add at the beginning corticosteroids and in the 130, with the nap paclitaxel, you will not use the corticosteroids. These differences have been emphasized in the very first trials uh, devoted to the ICI treatments in cancers, showing that it could be a negative influence of using corticosteroid when you try just to stimulate the immune systems. It will be probably explored better in future trial, and it will be probably very important to be uh, careful how to optimize the chemotherapy regimen that we might use with the ICI therapies in the future.